Hello, everyone. We are going to be starting chapter 10 in Lukute Amarim of the Tanya. And we are reading from Lessons in Tanya, which is a commentary of the Tanya elucidated by Rabbi Yosef Weinberg. Uh, we are on Chabad.org and they have a graciously made lessons of tanya for free so we're going to be looking at that we're going to be reading from that uh chapter 10 today we finished up chapter 9 last week thank god and um so we're in lessons in tanya likute amarim which is in the physical book it's going to be in the very first volume of the physical set <clears throat> And so this is chapter nine of part one, basically. And uh, we kind of left with a cliffhanger. Very exciting last week. I got to refresh my memory. Uh, oh, we left with, okay. Um, a man's, so the animal soul desires this for a man's benefit. Uh, in order that he prevail over her and vanquish her, as in the parable of the harlot related in the Holy Zohar. So the animal soul, right, correct me if I'm wrong, but the animal soul, the nefesh behemoth, wants to be ruled over and directed, so to speak. And that nefesh elokis, that godly soul, is the one who vanquishes or subdues that Nefesh Bahamas, the, the, the animal soul. And that's what we yeah. It was uh it was talking about how the true desire in our lives become when we over when we overcome these desires and not succumb to them, you know, our physical desires. Oh right. Yeah, that was such an important part of last week's. Yeah, the uh, Yates are Tov and the Yates are Hurrah, the evil inclination, mm -hmm. the good uh, inclination, and the fact that it's a it's an inclination, and if you can take that in, inclination, which is that that impulse or the, the process, and and uh, have that inclination, that desire. Uh, desire good things by the nefesh elokis telling it what to do then that desire will be for the good things and i think we kind of the uh, the altar rebbe didn't exactly say it but i think we were kind of drawing a conclusion on ourselves that um we want that desire to be for for godly godliness to reveal godliness to reveal to 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 desire to do the will of hashem to do the torah um and i think it even kind of alludes to that the faculty of action vested in his hands and the rest of his 248 organs this faculty being the third of the garments of the divine soul so that's talking about the action so there are three garments there's thought speech and deed those three garments uh, the the action is engaged in the mitzvahs. Uh, the second, which is, uh, is speaking, his mouth never ceases from study. So you talk about Torah on the way, uh, like the Shema says, and then your uh, the first faculty, the first garment is um, <clears throat> the mind, uh, be filled exclusively with the divine soul's garments of thought, uh, and then the second speech. So you're, you're, you should be engaged, your mind and your speech in Torah, and then your actions in doing Torah. Um, this is an important concept for non-Jews because uh, we are born into uh, a culture or a world uh, where we were not mitzvah, we were not commanded in these things. So what does that leave us? Um, and it appears from what we studied, uh, was wow, it's been months ago now, but it appears that um, um, we should be engaging in these things, not because we're commanded to, but uh, but as someone who is low mitsuve ose, um, that's that's me saying that. That's my deduction based on what the Alter Rebbe is saying. 
about uh, Torah study. Uh, we should be oisek in Torah, no matter who you are. Even if you are an idolater, uh, you should at least be involved in the seven mitzvahs. Uh, oisek in the seven, the Sheva mitzvahs, uh, B'nai Noah, that were given to Noah. And you're because you're involved in the Torah of the seven, the actual Torah of Moshe in the seven, um, that's a big deal. Uh, but you're you, you're at that point even an idolater starting to interact with that nefesh elokis. The problem is if you're an idolater doing anything beyond uh, uh, against the seven, you're you're going to be worthy of death basically. So um, you're going to have to change your ways. That's kind of what the nefesh elokis is for. It's it's to be ruled. It's to uh, refine yourself, your your nefesh behemoth, your animal soul. And that appears to me why it alludes that uh, a goy sheasek betora is hive misa. Goy, an idolater that is being deeply engaged in Torah study, is going to be worthy of death. Okay, let's get on to chapter ten. Wow. Making good progress. <clears throat> James, what did you just say? A goy a that goy. is engaged in Torah is worthy of death? Yeah, that's what it says in the Hebrew. Um, so, look, I even got it on speed dial. Um, akum, so an idolater. But here's the thing. A goy in the, in the um, non- in the uh this is the censored version uh now usually when we think of censored we think uh they changed it uh they altered it uh for to obfuscate or some such it appears to me from my studies that the censorship was not to alter or to play a shell game but is rather to clarify uh and this is a a whole other topic uh, that I've made some videos on and and I don't want to go in too much of a, a, a rabbit trail, but it appears to me that this is correct. It is the Akum. What's an Akum in Hebrew? Akum uh, is, means on a Dalitor. Uh, it, it, it's an acronym. It means Eved Kohavim Umazalot, uh, Servant of the Stars and the Constellations. Mm -hmm. A mazel, mazel lot, the constellations. If somebody says mazel tov, they think it's like they say it's good luck or something. It's not. A, it's not a little translation. Translation mazel is a connection. It's it's uh, literally means constellation. But if you think about what a constellation is, it is a uh, induction or, or, or of logic that a human does, or any probably intelligent being, I guess, but anyone who can do logic they induce meaning into things. So there's there's these stars and they produce a, a, a meaning. And that's what a mazel is. So you have the stars, kohavim, umazel. So this is a this is a very deep Indian. Like this is a very deep uh, concept. It doesn't just mean idolater. There's deeper things to this. An eved, so someone who is not necessarily with it, they they don't fully understand what they're doing. They're basically being told to do. They are a servant of the stars and constellations. In the uncensored, this says goy. In the uncensored, Mishnah Torah, uh, akum or goy she'asek betoa hiv mita. But here's the thing: in the English, they translate this as Gentile. Well, in English, Gentile means all non-Jews. That's not what it says, though, from everything that I have read in the Hebrew concerning um, non-Jews and things like this. Akum Goy in, is, is talking about idolatrous non-Jews. Uh, well, you, I, I wanted to kind of say something on that, too, James, on ahead. this Akum. Yeah. Um, I was trying to explain this in a way to help somebody understand. So, like, there's missionaries, yeah, and mm -hmm. there's no anti-missionaries. Mm -hmm. 
your anti-missionaries are your, like your pinkuses of the day, right? They're trying to go back and extract back the Kedusha that the missionaries have taken. Oh, right. Okay. 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 So, and the missionaries well, don't have a clue as yeah. to what they're doing, but there are some that may know, therefore, they're the type that would be distorting the Torah in their own, I'm going to use this for better use of words, uh, magic yes. uh, or magical or, or whatever powers that they think they can do within their own uh, backside realm, you know? Right, 100%. And so that's how I see the Akum. They're distorting. They know exactly what they're doing. And they are stealing the Kedusha, right. whereas the, uh, and they're using it for their own arts, their own magic arts. Right. That, Manipulation. That is, that is definitely a good uh, uh, commentary or explanation on that. That's actually, um, I think how, uh, uh, not so much on this verse, but that's how right. Rav uh, Aron Soloveitchik describes the Akum, the idolaters of the bygone eras, mm -hmm. where they they did know what they were doing. Mm -hmm. They were exactly. explicitly they knew Hashem, but they 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 perverted it on purpose. Right. Today, and so that's they, yeah. they not only do that with people, but that's what they're doing with the Torah. It's the same right extracting of the kedusha you know yeah. of torah so it's right. uh yeah so that's yeah. that's how i see that yeah. dixie anyways if that was a better explanation yeah and i'll it, and I'll, I'll i guess i do have to go into this a little bit more and then on the flip side mercy i gotta play uh but akum because it's an evid they don't have their seichel they're just doing the lives of their forefathers because they're just a servant to somebody else's will they don't really have a will of their own that could be another interpretation of that, which would be a mm -hmm. flip of yours. I'm not saying it's right, but no, but that makes good yeah. sense too, because yeah. now they're following in the ways of oh, somebody else. The to... lives of their forefathers. And that's actually how yeah. the Rambam opens up Hilchot Avodazara, the laws of Avodazara, and when he where he talks about what an Akum is and the devolution of into idolatry, which is right. there were people that knew Hashem and then there became common people their their descendants were their answer their their uh, progeny was ignorant so how do you teach the ignorant well they said well we can't get them to see Hashem the way we do so we're going to dumb it down so to speak and that's what was called the wise ones of um of um of um A, a, a Enos, a, it wasn't Enoch, but he, yeah, his time, the, the wise ones of his time, and they conspired to tell the, the common people, hey, you need to respect and honor the sun and the moon and the stars and the constellations because they are servants of Hashem. And because they are servants of Hashem, therefore, you should give them honor and respect. That was the beginning of Shituf. And then what happened was that generation died off and they were only left with people worshiping the stars and the constellations and whatever else, uh, what other idols that they made that they, they initially said were the servants of Hashem. But what happens is the children saw their parents bowing down and they actually thought that, oh, that must be God, heaven forbid. And that That's is... Enough. That too, and, the, and, and they, they began to build a priesthood and uh, institutions, and, uh, and, and that institution uh, promoted right. itself in, you know, in, in to where people started paying homage and, and giving them things and, okay. and making them a special status. And, and, and they really manipulated the mistake of these children once they grew up. As, as as following what their parents did, but the uh, these uh, priesthood that evolved out of it uh, manipulated and, and took advantage of that situation to glorify themselves. Right. That's why I have like a lot of compassion for people that are in idolatry. They don't know it, but they just they just do the lives of their forefathers. 
they don't know what they're doing. They just, they're just, and so why did I come to this conclusion? Why am, why am I saying that this is momish idolaters here, non-Jewish idolaters rather than all non-Jews, which I believe is a perverted translation, unfortunately. Uh, I want to give strong kudos to uh, Hauger here. Not not here, but in the rest of the Torah, be, uh, to not, uh, the Mishnah Torah, because uh, we would not be able to read it, a lot of us, unless we had that. And, you know, you do millions of words worth the translations or whatever it is, you're probably going to have, uh, somebody's going to have an issue with something. Well, this is my issue with that. So you stand on the shoulders of giants, so to speak, and this is just my issue. But... Um, so uh, I really do appreciate Tagger for his translations, but this is just where we are that this needs to be corrected, in my opinion, this translation. Why did I come to the conclusion this is an idolater? Well, what kicked me off is the very next verse. Uh, 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 the, um, uh, the Akum, however, an Akum uh, that gives Sadaka, uh, Yisrael can receive it, but they give it to the Akum poor. The Yisrael cannot keep the tzedakah, the charity of an Akum, of an idolater non-Jew. Okay? They have to give it. Yisrael takes it, but they have to give it to the Akum poor. Why does this matter? Because earlier on, it says a Ben Noach, however, uh, Ben Noach Natan Sedaka, uh, Ben Noach that gives Sedaka, uh, 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 he, uh, you, you accept it, uh, for yourself, he may knew, right? Yeah, you accept it from him, right? Right, right. So, a Ben Noach, however, that gives Sedaka, Yisrael accepts it from him, um, yeah, uh, Uriah. You are you. It appears. Uh, you are here. Okay, I'm not translating that right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it appears to me uh, uh, mm -hmm. that it's given to the poor of Yisrael, and that he is a. Uh, he is Nison Mi Yisrael Mitsuve, and he supported. I'm going to read it from the Tauger here. It'll make sense better. Yeah, it appears to me. Yeah, that wasn't fear. That was it appears to me that it should be given to the Yisrael poor. Right. For the Ben Noach, it says Noahide here, but the Ben Noach derives his sustenance from the Yisrael, and they are commanded to support him if necessary. In other words, okay, there is no commandment in the Torah for a Yisrael to support a Ben Noach. A Ben Noach actually isn't really isn't even mentioned in the Torah. I think it might even, it might call Noach's sons ben, ben noach but other than that i don't think it's ever mentioned anywhere else yeah only only four times james and it's always referring to the literal sons of noah right exactly so here there is no mitzvah what is this mitzvah and, and dixie i hope you're listening this is the ger toshav this mitzvah here for this ben noach that is giving tzedakah this commandment is for the ger toshav so, so Jack, you know, he would give tzedakah to maybe the local rabbi or the, your friends or some such that are uh, rabbis or Jewish. This is where, the, this is that commandment here. This is what separates a Stam Ben Noach, a plain Ben Noach, to a Ben Noach that gives tzedakah. Why does that matter? Because this mitzvah here is likened to a Ger Toshav. There is no mitzvah in the Torah for Yisrael to give tzedakah to a Ben Noah. What is the distinctive factor here? Is it, it's two things. It's a Ben Noah, it's somebody who's doing the seven, and two, he is giving tzedakah. 
Mm -hmm. That matrix, that logical combination of those two things makes him different than the Akum that gives Sadaka. That's why it's been so important to support, to give the Sadaka and support the Jewish people in Jack's marriage. Yes. I mean, that's, it's excellent. So what happens is Yisrael has to make a choice according to the Rambam and his Mishnah Torah. So this forces Yisrael to make a choice. Is such a person like a Toshav, or is such a person an Akum, a non-Jewish idolater? So when you give Sadaka, and that you know that that rabbi or whoever, that Yisrael is accepting and keeping your tzedakah, they are treating you like a ger toshav. There is no mitzvah for them to sustain a ben noach or whatever. It's only the ben noach that gives tzedakah. In other words, this is based in right here. This is based in. This is the tzedakah based in, I, I would call it. No other mitzvah can you bring this into right now because we're just talking about tzedakah right now. You can't say, well, you accepted me as Ger Toshav, therefore um, you can let me live in the land or something like that. That would be a different kind of uh, instance of a based in, like like a Ger Toshav or like a based in. Uh, but the fact that you are literally doing it, and, 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 and Russell, you and I talked about this a little bit, different topic, but Utzla'aretz, outside the land of Yisrael. This appears to me that this would work. At least. So, so this is James, huge. The interesting thing, though, is that, that says there that it's like the Ger Toshav, but they won't acknowledge a Ger Toshav, even though they'll take your Sadaka. Correct. That's why you say, I am like a Ger Toshav. If you say, I am a Ger Toshav, then every single thing, every single mitzvah, uh, every single, every single, every uh, halachot, every halacha, the law that they come across, ger toshav, then they are obligated to do for you in ger toshav, including slavery, including the yovel year stuff. Well, guess what? There's no yovel year, so they're gonna. So what do they say? There's no ger toshav today. We don't have ger toshav. Well, one, that's not true, because uh, the the Halacha, the Hebrew doesn't say there's no, it doesn't say anything about the existence of Ger Toshav. It says that the Ger Toshav are not practiced today uh, because the Yovel year is not practiced. And uh, I just lost my video. Um, oh, I think it's shortened out on me. Oh, oh, it went sideways. Um, so uh, this is the modern, this. This is not, um, how do I put this? It's important. If this said Ger Toshav, it, it, uh, a rabbi could say, well, we have no Ger Toshav today, whatever. And it would be hard to refute. Why does this make this significant? Because it says a Ben Noach. A Ben Noach that gives Sadaka. The Rambam is equating a Ben Noach that gives Sadaka to the Ger Toshav law for Sadaka. This is huge. Mm-hmm. this is it like and, and uh, of course a rabbi could say hey i don't i don't follow the mishnah torah well then you'd have to look in other sources and and, and, and do other things but if the if the rambam is big on the plate of the rabbi then this is it um it's hard to refute and the it, this 1010 i quote this so much because it does a few things uh one thing is that it differentiates a Ben Noach, you can see it in the Hebrew here, it differentiates a Ben Noach from the Akum. There are now two types of non-Jews, at least in the Rambam's Mishnah Torah now. You have a Akum and you have a Ben Noach. Rabbi, what's a Ben Noach? What's an Akum? You see? There's there's two different denim now. There's two, two different judgments. Before, if you read it in the Hebrew, or you read it in an English translation, you would have thought it's all Gentile. You would have thought, oh, there's only one law for the Gentile. Let's call it the divine code. 
Nope. There's two different, at least two different types of laws for non-Jews. Ben Noach laws, Akum laws, and there's actually something called Gir Toshav laws. Right. And, and why is that? that uh, sorry, was that was that in in eight uh, in eight uh, eight ten uh, with, with the idea that the pledges can yes. be taken one hundred percent because you can take the pledge and you can take the pledge anywhere. It, it, that it creates yeah. the third person. You're right, and that 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 so so in other words, like the rugged shovel gone. He says there's a Gertoshav Yovel, Ha Yovel, Gertoshav Ha Yovel, and a Gertoshav Bismanaze. Gertoshav Bismana Yovel and Gertoshav Bismanaze. What does that mean? He say he, he's translating literally in the Ragachavar Gaon's Lashon in his language, he differentiates between a Gertoshav of Yovel and the Gertoshav Bismanaze, Gertoshav of today. This is the treating people. Even if it's just a plain Ben Noah, because he's giving tzedakah, he's treated like the Ger Toshav. I would call this the Ger Toshav Bizman Hase, the Ger Toshav of today. So this is the idolater today. Now, now listen, if there's a rabbi listening to this and he's about ready to take me out of context, I am not saying that the Ger Toshav Gamor, the complete Ger Toshav, is um, in play today. There's no Yovel year. The laws of slavery and the like are not in play. Now you could say there's there's Prespool and things like this. There's like and and, and uh, uh, giving money to one another within Yisrael uh, because and there's no Yovel. Well, that's similar to what's going on with the Gertoshav here, which is he's not a Gertoshav Gamor. He's not the Gertoshav of Yovel, but he is. Uh, the Gerto Shab is Manaze, which is what I usually call, and I, it it helps. I call it the Gert, the like a Gerto Shab, because when you say like a Gerto Shab, you're not saying that I'm a Gerto Shab, and therefore uh, that rabbi has to then call you a Gerto Shab, because then you're putting the onus on him, and that's that's just not um, a polite thing to do, in my opinion. You you don't come into somebody's house or whatever or on their property and say hey i'm i'm supposed to be here it's up to them to be able to accept you or not so you have to just like you would anything you have to be polite and you have to say i am like a gerto shop and now if they say no i don't believe well, that's fine to them they might be wrong but you can't take away their their um humanity either they have to be able to make the choice uh, whether they're wrong or not, but uh, and that, that like a gear toshav is is in the Torah. It, it, that person exists within the Torah, right? And and, and the Rambam is clearly saying mitsuve, ve, oh, uh, 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 mitsuve alechem lachi yuso. You have a mitzvah alechem him to sustain him his life. Yeah, and it's called it's called Kager. And it can, yeah. So it is a mitzvah, according to the Rambam, Dixie. Jack gives Sadaka. You give uh Sadaka and Jack's merit, or however you do it. This is the playbook. This is what's going on. It is a mitzvah for that Yisrael, according to the Rambam, to sustain you. If you were ever in need. Interesting. And that is not the Akum. That is not like the Akum who gives Sadaka. How how mm -hmm. today in modern no Yovel day, how does the Jew distinguish between a Ben Noach and an Akum? Let's go with what Russell is talking about. Let's go to um Russell brought up. Uh, yeah 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 let's can i copy this easy here we go so so um russell said oh well hey james just two chapters earlier there's a declaration for for non-jews how are we going to make such a declaration how what would be uh 
as kosher as possible way to do this. Again, we're in the Mishnah Torah, King uh, Hilchot Malachim, the the laws Hilchot uh, uh, laws of kings and the in their wars, and the Mishnah Torah. It's the very back of the Mishnah Torah. Um, it's where all the Sheva mitzvahs are, all the seven commandments are. It is talking about the redemption here. It's talking about Mashiach. It's the war. The end times war. Like, this is it. And it's very exciting. It's very interesting. Rambam says, anyone who accepts upon himself the fulfillment of these Sheva mitzvahs and is precise in their observance and is considered, this is a bad translation, I would say, is considered from the pious of the, no, 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 from the kind ones, the the Hasidei Umoto Alam, from the kind ones of the peoples of the world. And I'm going to go Hasidus here, and I'm going to say of the concealment. Um which we've talked about in this class, well, at least I, I have talked about in this class. Uh, it's so important. The kind ones of the peoples of the concealment. Who are the kind ones of the peoples of the concealment? Those are the ones that have been lied to, but they are kind. And that's why I am kind and give grace to people who are considered idolaters in their avodazara, whatever it is they do, but they do it, they, they have an element of bittle of kindness. Um, they are considered, if they take on the Sheva mitzvahs, because they have bittle by taking on the seven, they are taking on the yoke of heaven here. Therefore, they have an element of bittle. You already know they have an element of bittle. Uh, submission. Bittle is like submission. We talked about this in Hasidus as well. Hasidei Omoto Alam have bittel. And because they have bittel, they have an element, a chelek olam haba, a, a portion in the world to come. We've learned that from Hasidus, and uh, we talked about this in the previous classes. This is a big deal. And and they will merit a, okay, well, it, yeah, and they will merit a share in the world to come. So it, I'm not saying that such people are going to, everything that they're doing is right, and they're going to completely inherit their a total portion in the world to come. Hashem, I believe, is going to decide whatever portion that your soul is connected to him through chesed, by, through that bittel, he is going to decide whatever your merit, your, your, your portion is. It's not up to me to decide. I'm not going to tell you based on some kind of Gnosticism. It's, that's between you that person in Hashem. That's just, from what I've gathered in my studies, that's what it is. This applies only when he fulfills them, accepts them, and fulfills them. Mitzuve ose, commanded and does. I don't think it probably says it exactly in the Hebrew. It's because he receives them and does them. So he has Kabil, he, he has Kabbalah of the seven. So you have to have Kabbalah. Kabbalah is a key word here. And he does and is precise in their observance and fulfills them because the Holy One, blessed be he, commanded them in the Torah and informed us through Moshe, our teacher, that B'nai Noah, that Noah's descendants have been commanded to fulfill them previously. This is huge. The, these, this wording is, is very precise, and there's a reason. And, and Russell and I have talked about this before. B'nai Noah, Stam B'nai Noah, people will say, oh, I do the seven, but they don't necessarily do it because the Torah says so. They do it because they're maybe, oh, well, my, my father told me to do the seven. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. They, they do it uh, logically. Okay, you have to bring them to the Torah and base them. That is not Gnosticism. Uh, too many rabbis, I believe, read this wrong. And they say that, oh, well, they have to, re to, in order to receive a portion in the world to come, they have to keep the seven because the Torah says, no, that's Gnosticism. That, that means that you have to have the intelligence and intellect in order to 
uh, you have to be able to read and do a bunch of things to receive a portion in the world to come. That's weird. That's, uh, that's called Gnosticism. It doesn't have anything to do with faith or belief. Rather, if you look at the Hasidic explanation of what Hasidei Moto Alam is, it's not about knowledge at all. It's about, it's about having bittel uh, through Hesed to Hashem through the, what's called the Klipat Noga. Uh, because Hasidei Moto Alam derived from that Klipa Noga. And Kli things that derive from Klipa Noga um, receive a portion in the world to come. Um, but then, yeah, that, that declaration, that declaration is the establishment of the Ger Toshav. It, yes, it's today, not not the complete Ger Toshav. It's more yeah. than just that. Like it's it's Kabbalah. This is talking about Kabbalah, and this is talking about Yisrael accepting such a person. Oh, now I know because you have put on the yoke of the seven, because you've put on the yoke of the Torah, now I can accept you. You have accepted the same yoke that I've put on, basically, even though it's not Taryag Mitzvahs, mm -hmm. but it's like it, right? So yeah. I know now that you have Bittel. Oh, you are going to be in the world to come. Now I know you are from Klipat No God. Now I know I can elevate you. Now I know I can interact with you in a good and peaceful manner. This is about Yisrael interacting with such a non-Jew. Now, does a non-Jew need to listen to this? Should he aspire at the very minimum to obtain to this level? Yes, but this is this isn't this isn't pertaining to uh, the 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 non-Yisrael entering into the world to come. Uh, uh -huh. He could already do that yes. through the Noga, through whatever means that he is in when it comes to the Klippad Noga, that concealment. So yeah. you have to be careful when you're talking with non-Jews because they could be interacting through this Klippad Noga. So when they are kind to you, you want to be kind to them, things like this. And um, But it doesn't necessarily mean you need to sustain their life. Why? Because they could be giving into idolatry, into a Vodazar or whatever. Um, but, but James, how does this now? If we're we're looking at this, we're looking at Israel accepting this B'nai Noach in this manner. Uh, how does that? Are are they acknowledging something? You know, an elevated animal soul to be in that status, to take that declaration, to take on that yoke. That's what it looks like. This is this is like you, you, this is why I love reading the Tanya and the Rambam because the Rambam language, his lashon is very similar to the Hasidic lashon, the Hasidic language. Um, what was I saying? Oh, everything that is from Klipat Noga is permissible to the Yisrael. That's what it kind of comes down to. Why? Because anything from Klipat Noga is involved in the positive uh, commandments, all 248 positive mitzvahs, they can be elevated. So it is a mitzvah. It, I don't know if I should say a mitzvah, but when a, when a Yisrael comes across such a soul, whether it be an animal, any animal soul, that, that whether it be an actual animal or a human, uh, whether it be themselves as a Yisrael, because Yisrael also has a nefesh behemoth, an animal soul, they have to berur that animal soul. That is the whole purpose of the godly soul. The nefesh eloki sole purpose is to berur, to extract and refine that uh, everything that comes from the Okay. So, so, uh, and what is he called? Uh, this is basically called Ger Toshav here. This is, this is the, he, I don't know if he explicitly says it here, but this is basically what it is. Uh, this is the acceptance. It, uh, it, if there was a Yolvali year, this would be the, 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 one of, if not the, uh, function of how the base then would work. Okay. 
And today I would even say that this, and, and I believe this is what the uh, Lubavitcher Rebbe was getting at, which is why he made it uh, uh, such a huge push to Lachof to uh, compel the, the nations of the world for B'nai Noach to accept at this level. Because Yisrael is already done everything that they need to do. They're, they've already done polish their buttons, so to speak. Like, they are over polishing their buttons. <laughs> they 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 are over prepared. They are in a vacuum, a uh, like what Mike says, a uh, like a a chamber, a vacuum chamber. I forget what he says, but they need to get out. <laughs> they need to get out a little bit more, and they need to start interacting with non Jews. And how do they do that? They do that through the sheva mitzvahs. That's why the Rebbe pushed it so so hard and this is where we are right now this 811 is where we are and people are going to say oh there's no gertoshav today no nowhere in the torah does they say there is no gertoshav today it doesn't say that it's it's talking about the yovel year where it says it and it says that the yovel year isn't practiced therefore the gertoshav isn't accepted well, that sounds like, oh, there's can't be interacting with anybody like Yeratoshav. Everybody you got to treat like an Akum. The Rambam, however, says, no, 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 no. Hold on. A Ben Noach, however, when he gives Sadaka, you treat him like a Yeratoshav. Why? Because Sadaka has nothing to do with the Oval. 99% of interacting with non Jews doesn't have anything to do with the Oval year. So that's why I tell people I am. I don't tell people I'm a Ben Noach. I don't tell people I'm an Akum Goy. Heaven forbid I tell people I'm a Goy. I tell people uh, for people who know, for rabbis who know the Lashon, who know the lingo, even though they might not get the concept of what I'm saying yet, I tell them I am like a Ger Toshav. I am like a Ger Toshav. Why? Because that gives them time to understand what it is I'm saying. Now, could they go on their way and say, James, you're full of it? Yes, they could. Every human being has the ability to do that. I'm not into coercion. I don't try to coerce people a lot. And I, it, it's something that I hate, quite honestly. I don't believe in coercing people. Uh, I, I want to believe in freedom and things like that. If Hashem is going to do with them, however, Hashem, whatever they do in, in their free time, like in their freedom or whatever. Like that is klipa. If they want to be involved in the klipa, they are going to derive from klipa, and it's going to be the fruits of klipa, which is death. God's going to take care of them. Give them all the freedom they want. They will chop off parts of their bodies. They will not procreate, and they will die. Them and their progeny. That reminds me of uh, something uh, Sergeant Neil said, you know, Hey, give the privates, you know, enough rope, they'll hang themselves. Yeah, exactly. And that's what Hashem does with us in the world. So, so do I care about those people? Yes, but I can't overstep my bounds because they're just going to come back and overstep their bounds. And then, then I'm living in a world of hurt under their, their chains. Um, so this is the Gerto Shab Bismanaze. We're, we're in Mishnatory. Kings and Wars, the Rambam's Mishnah Torah. Gerito Shab today. There is, you can treat people like a Gerito Shab today. And the Rambam is clear. This is, there's no Ben Noah uh, mitzvah to, there's no commandment for the Israel to interact with the Ben Noah. What's the commandments for? Like I think Russell said, it's the Ger, the Ger that is in your gate. You have a commandment to sustain him. Where is this mitzvah lehi yuso from? It's from the gear, the 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 the, the gear that's in your gate. Yeah. And when you give that, when you give that to the rabbis or to Jewish institutions and, and orphanages or whatever, they're they aren't they acknowledging that? They aren't have they... to, yeah, subconsciously or whatever. Yeah, like they're the it, it, for the Rambam. They would be breaking the law of the Rambam if they were to take and uh, to keep it if they thought you were an idolater. 
Now there could be a workaround and they said, well, I'm in fear of my life. I'm afraid you might kill me. I'm under duress. Therefore, I'm going to do this for, for, for laws of peace, for the sake of peace. So what, what would you say then as a non-Jew to make sure that your rabbi is interacting with you in a kosher manner or whatever? Say, are you going to accept my tzedakah for the sake of heaven? If he tells you it's for the sake of peace, chances are what he's saying is, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that you're going to kill me, therefore I'm going to accept it. So ask him, are you going to accept this tzedakah lishma? Now, do I say that? No, <laughs> I don't ask him that. But that would be the litmus test. Rabbi, my name is James Gosnell. I am a non-Jew that keeps the seven because the Torah says so, as given by Moshe. And here's some tzedakah. Uh, I would like you to keep it, do whatever you feel is uh, best with it, uh, keep it within the community, and I want you to do it for the sake of heaven. Would you agree to that? See what he says, right? Um, <clears throat> if if he says yes um, and he keeps it, then a the worst case he's lying to you. Best case he's on the same page as you, and you guys are both bringing Geula. You're bringing the redemption together. That's the interaction that needs to happen. This is the interaction right now. Uh, we've all been there, but now I've explained it to you guys in depth. At least I think. As deep as I think we can go right now. <laughs> so, so Dixie, that is, uh, you know, the Gentile who studies Torah is obligated to die. You've probably heard that uh, phrase. It actually means the octum, the idolater. Yeah, idolatrous non-Jew. And uh, Very good, James. Yeah. You did very good. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. It's uh, ben Noach, however, uh, there's there's all the various sources that explicitly say a Ben Noach, however, he can study as much Torah as he wants. He's not in this category of Akum. The uh, uh, Hasim Soifer talks about this. Um, the uh, Meiri talks about this, I believe. Um, it's, it, and it's just logical. Like it, it, when you when the things that we're studying with Hasidus, like of course you're going to be going into it more you don't want to the tanya for instance talks about how that nefesh elokis when you start interacting with it its desire is to it, it to to subdue your nefesh behemoth and deep down your nefesh behemoth desire is for it to be subdued so it would be it, we would have we'd start to have a lot of at least very least psychological trauma and issues non-Jews being told that they can't do that. And everybody here, I'm sure, and I've been in the non-Jewish Torah community for, wow, a long time now. I have seen countless people either give up their faith or they just go back into uh, Avodah Zarah or whatever. They become very lethargic or they become anti-Semitic and, and for that reason. They were told they can't, they feel like they can, they can't deal with it. They literally, like psychologically, mentally, they emotionally, whatever, they can't deal with it because they need help. And they're they're being cut off from the Torah. There are people saying, no, 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 you can't do that. You're, you're actually creating a chidush das, right? We've heard that. You're creating a new religion. Really? I'm By studying the Torah, I'm creating a new religion where does that come from it comes from the idolater like mercy was talking about an idolater who uses the torah for what he's starting to create feasts for himself and, and do all these other things and we see that in other other re religions they use the torah and to twist it and to create a new religion no one here is trying to create a new religion at least I'm not. And I don't believe you guys are. I know you guys. Mostly... I'm not. Yeah. It's like, how do you, how do you we got to get on board with Torah. <laughs> I'm not trying to, I'm trying to unify things. I'm not trying to. I often tell people that simply that I follow the Tanakh. Yeah. 
so that is uh wow uh, i'm gonna have to label this class something else <laughs> but um <laughs> something separate was very good and very needed <laughs> yeah i but appreciate it's, it it's, it's yeah. very it's uh that's the difference between a Gerto Shave, Ben Noach, and a Goy, by the way. Like the Ritva, you know. Uh, a Gerto Shave is someone who is accepts the seven. They have Kabbalah of the seven because the Torah says so. Hashem says so. And they do it. A, a Ben Noach yeah. doesn't have that intellectual interface. They are doing whatever it is that they want to do. That's what's called a Ben Noach. They do, they are a low Mitsuve Bosa. They're not commanded to does. They don't have Kabbalah. And how do you get Kabbalah? What's like the legal kind of general way is through base din. That's why base din is talked about so much because base din is a getter. It's a, it's a category. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a level, a madrega. Base din is a madrega that can happen today. Uh, it would be better if it was done like um, a and Torah, like the giving of Torah, but that's not going to happen. At least it's not going to happen right now. James, is there a, is there a certain, uh, you know, this idea about uh, doing the, doing tikkun and doing restoration in the world by doing the mitzvahs because you're commanded to, and then I've I've heard that uh, that the uh, non-Jew can't can't do this. Tikkun. Oh right, you can't. Yeah, you can't do the tikkun because you're not commanded. Right. And this kind of goes against all of that because totally. it is saying that we are commanded. Yeah, the Rambam explicitly says you have Kabbalah. And you're doing and you are doing tikkun in the world uh, because you are you're you're uh, uh, commanded in, in, in the seven. And uh, when you're doing the seven, you are doing tikkun. Yeah, am right. I right or is that am that I, was, I asked Rabbi Chlorophene this once, and this is uh I asked him, what is Kabbalah? And I, I, I think I'll have to check my messages. But I think I asked, and I think I was talking about this. I said, it appears to me that Kabbalah, what is Kabbalah? Like you can, what is Mitsuve Vaose? And, and we got to the notion, and he probably already knew it, I don't know. But he said, the Torah is the word of Hashem. He says, if you accept his word, is not not Kabbalah. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, the response like... is, the response is, hold on, Owen, the response is, do you believe the word, the Torah is the word of Hashem? If somebody says yes, and you say yes, that is, it appears to me that that's Kabbalah. Now, why does the Rambam say this here? Kol Sheva mitzvahs. So you accept, you have acceptance, you have Kabbalah of what? The Sheva mitzvahs. Does that make sense? Yeah. I yes. mean, that's, the way I, that's the way I'm seeing it. This way is Ger Tosha. If you have Kabbalah, Sheva mitzvahs, and you're careful in doing them and everything, then the Yisrael can interact with you. Already, Owen, I'm sorry, I had to say that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, say you got you know two, two different people, and they both you know, one is commanded to fall you know to follow, and the other one it just does it you know naturally. Oh, very good commanded. question. Okay, so the okay. Rambam talks about that. Uh, however, if he so he's talking about the Gerto Shav type of guy. He's he accepts them because the Torah says so. He's Mitsuve Ose. He's commanded and does. I think I don't think the Rambam uses the term Mitsuve. I think he calls them. Uh, Oh, yeah, he calls him uh, accepted and does. He he accepts. He has Kabil and does. Which I don't want to speak for the Rambam, but it appears to me that that would mean he is Mitsuve Ose. He's commanded and does. If you have, if you accept them, then you are considered commanded. That's what based in. Yeah. So oh, I agree with that. Yeah. Right. Very good. And to answer your question, the Rambam says, however, if he fulfills them, he's talking about the Sheva Mitzvahs here, if he fulfills them out of intellectual conviction, so in other words, on his own intellect, he is not a Ger Toshav, nor of the Hasidei Umot Olam, nor of their wise men, 
Now there's one version of the Mishnah Torah here that, that says he he is of their wise men. And I I'm I want to agree with that version rather than this one. Uh, and the reason why is or the reason why it might not be is because they might say, well, there's no wisdom in the nations. Uh, however, there are people who are like, uh, and I, I call them like uh, moral atheists. They do the seven, but they don't do them because the, the the Torah says so. They couldn't, they could care less about the Torah. They think it's just made up or whatever. That's that's this type of person. This is that's what I yeah. would call a stam ben Noah, a plain ben Noah. Isn't that what the Rambam calls? He said they're known as the wise of the world, but they have no portion in the world to come. Right, right. That's this this guy right here. That's that same person. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, there's two different versions of the Mishnah Torah. Uh, that and when Hakim, you know, reveals the imprints yeah. the Torah in everybody's heart, you know, these people will have very little little disagreement. They'll all, they'll be like right there. All they need is that last step. Oh right. Yeah. That's that's why the the like the Rebbe, for instance, he talked about that. Try to lahof, try to get those people to see do the seven even beyond just doing them because they believe they're moral things, but do them because the Torah says so. It's it's yeah. it's the obligation of a Yisrael to try to bring the whole world into this based in system right here. Mm -hmm. I'm running across a lot of these people more so uh, than usual. Seems like right about this time to where they don't accept the the oral uh, tradition of the Jewish people, so they won't believe that the the, the Noah laws are you know from the Torah or from the Shia, and so but. but when you ask them if they keep the laws, you know, which law do you don't keep? Which one of these things don't you do? They, they always say that, you know, they do them. But well, they, are, they are this person right here. I am, I'm being shocked at how many people I'm finding today that hold that belief. 100%. And that is the difference. That is the difference. One one thing that I want to stress, like in this call, among other things, but is that is the difference between what's called a Ben Noach in a Ger Toshav. A Ben Noach cannot live in the land. Even though he's doing the seven, he has to have Kabbalah of the seven. He has to, have, he has to receive the seven or else he's not going to be able to go into the land. You have to follow the law of the land to be able to live in the land. And that's with any nation. Yisrael has their own laws. And you have to follow their laws. If you if you say, well, I don't I don't believe in the sovereignty of your nation, but I'm still going to keep the laws. That's a problem with Yisrael. It's a holy land. You can't do that. And uh, you have to you have to do this, or else it's not considered Ger Toshav. And that's why I have such a big hang up. And I try to stress this so much in our non Jewish Bnei Noach Ger Toshav whatever forums is because what do you get like russell said you're going to get somebody who's a moral atheist or a they're in still into christianity or uh they're into what's the care right or whatever uh -huh. and they don't accept the torah they just don't though they just want to accept like parts of it but they don't accept like fully or whatever you have to, because you can't say, like, I'm just going to keep some of them or I'm just going to accept some of them or whatever. You have to be on board with the whole thing. And if you're not, you're going to create division in the land instead of unity. And so that's that's the one of the big reasons, uh, uh, one of the big issues we're facing in the non-Jewish Torah community, uh, which is people are not doing the seven based on the Torah. Some of, some of them are, some of them aren't. And then what happens, we get in fights and things like that. But this is the Indian. This is the concept of why there's fighting, because we, the, this wisdom is not being explained. That's why I tell people I am like a Ger Toshav. If you say we well, need to do it, uh, you need to be a Ger Toshav or whatever, Rabbi, they're going to bring in rabbis, and the rabbis are going to say, oh, there's no Ger Toshav today. No, tell people you're like a Ger Toshav, and I want you to be like a Ger Toshav. What does that mean? I mean, be like this. Be like this guy. 
be like this guy who accepts the seven because the Torah says so. You have Kabbalah of the seven. Be like this guy in uh, 1010 here that is giving Sadaka. How like a Ger Toshav? Be like a Ger Toshav. And how do you prove to Yisrael that you are like a Ger Toshav? Like I said, do that litmus test with them. Tell them that you accept the seven because the Torah says so. Give them a dollar. Give them 20 bucks. I don't know. Whatever. Say, hey, would you would you accept this sedaka for me, Lishma, for the sake of heaven? And would you keep it in the community and, and help the poor of Israel? Yeah, that oh my goodness. You know what that's called? That's called Geula. That's called Esav meeting Yisrael and doing Teshuva. That's uh Cain doing Teshuva with Abel, things like that. That's that is the Torah. When you understand that concept here, this is Geula. Yeah, it's kind of like Jacob when Jacob looks at Esau's face, and you know he sees, I seen the, the you know the face of of God or the face of the angels, you know, and and acknowledging that and looking at the holy head of Esau and looking at the righteous aspects of Esau and acknowledging that and accepting that. Amen, amen. That's one hundred percent right, Russell. That's that's where we are. Dixie's talking about this. Hey, you know, we we give seduc exactly what we're supposed to be doing right now. Sedaka, uh, honor, um, I'm, I, it kind of escapes me, but there's a, there's tons of simple things that I know specifically that are their halakhic Torah sources for to treat for Yisrael to treat people like Ger Toshav today. Nesach uh, Yain, the laws of wine, uh, uh, similar concept. If if if. Um, uh, uh, Yisrael can benefit from the wine of a of a Ben Noach or somebody who's like a Ger Toshav. They cannot benefit from the wine of somebody who's an Akum. Th those laws apply today. We can apply these things today. Uh, Aaron uh, Salavich, Rav Aaron Salavichik, a blessed memory. He talks about this in um, in Oid Yisrael Yosef Bini Hai. Simon 3, uh, Gimel, uh, Simon Gimel, chapter 3 there, he talks about treating non-Jews. Non-Jews, because they are not in the heavy klipa of Akum right now, because they're not into the heaviness of the idolatry of former years, when they give tzedakah to you, when they do kindness to you, treat them like a Ben Noach who is doing those things, and they are treated like a Ger Toshav. Uh, uh, walking uh, for Amos, um, Dalit Amos, for uh, when they when they die, uh, you can honor a non-Jew and things like that. You can help them out, or give, give them sedaka, whatever. It's very big. That's that's the step of where we are in Geula. Am I saying that there's a Yovel year today? And we need to accept the the slaves of the Ger Toshav. No, that's not what I'm talking about. So. All righty. Is it? Is it? You know, yeah. Yeah. Let's, just, let's see what I'm looking at here. So uh, you're going to make a ton of progress. Yeah. You start calling yourself like a Ger Toshav, and you write down this. Take yes. notes. He'll help Malak in 1010. Take notes <laughs> and start calling yourself like a Ger Toshav. Get into the Sugiya with the rabbi and say, I know that you can't fully accept Ger Toshav today. But in the aspects, I am like a Gertoshav. Can you accept me like that? See, see, see what they say. See what goes on. So, yeah. And do you see that in? in is, are you looking at? Did you look there in eight ten to where you see Akum Kader? And what I'm looking at here, where it says that phrase. The very end of it. In 11? 10. 8, 10. Oh, that's Please. another thing, too. Yeah. He, oh, oh, this is a good point. He does call them Gertoshav. So, uh, Uh, Moshe only gave uh, the Torah and the mitzvahs as an inheritance to Yisrael. Um, 
I quote 33 4, but I believe that says to the congregation of Yaakov, not the congregation of Yaakov. Commentary says that includes Gerim. Uh, and to all those who desire to convert from among the nations, to Ger among the nations. Again, a translation I don't like. Talking about Kahem Kager. Like a Ger. Like a Ger. But is that the one? Is that the one we've done? You, you broke up, but I know that there is. We've talked about that at length. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's in. I'm I'm seeing it in the Hebrew in eight ten. Yeah, if, if I'm looking at everything yeah. correctly here. Yeah. However, someone who does not desire to accept, who does not have Kabbalah of the Torah and mitzvahs. should not be forced to. So by the same regard, Moshe was commanded by the Almighty to compel Lachof, all the inhabitants of the world, to accept the commandments given to Noah's descendants. So this is where the Rebbe, he, he, the Rebbe draws on this quite a bit about why Yisrael should Lachof, should compel the nations to the peoples uh, to accept the seven because the Torah says so. If one does not accept these commands, he should not. A person who formally accepts these commands, it says formally here, and I don't believe, okay, this is something, this is another hang up. I don't believe it says formally. And this is something that rabbis like to say, yeah. This is another thing that rabbis like to say. I hate to say it because uh, it sounds like I'm picking on rabbis, but the truth is they're most of the people that say it. Nowhere does it say here that you have to formally accept. Nowhere does it say that you have to have a base din. Does the Torah bring up base din a lot? Yes. Why? Because that's a it's a it's a it's a good way for Yisrael to like have a process for this. But is it really, is it really like the, the thing? Is it No, the thing, the real thing is to have Kabbalah to make sure that it's received from Hashem. How does a Yisrael do it? They're going to do it through a court system because they have to accept that you accept. But when it comes to you accepting, how do you accept it? What even drew you to base it in the first place? It's because you lachoved yourself, basically, by the Torah, by you studying the Torah, by you having Kabbalah. So well, it does not say formally here. This is a big issue I've got as well that I just realized. Uh, I found a source for, basically, but it's like you, you start to run into so many things like, anyways, a person who formally accepts doesn't say formally, doesn't say formally. It just says a person who has Kabbalah. It, the thing is, why does it probably say formally accepts? Because if they just left accepts, it doesn't give the whole full weight of what Kabel means. The Kabel to accept. Kabel is a big deal. You're talking about Kabbalah. You're, you're actually talking about interacting with Hashem directly from your point of view. That's a big deal. And it doesn't wouldn't come across yeah. in the English very well if they only left accepts. So it's like you said, it's like you said in the beginning, you know, first comes, you know, the thought, then comes the speech, speaking, and then comes the action. Wow, Owen, very good. You're exactly right. Yeah, first exactly you have right. to accept it in your mind. Yeah, 100%. And then, you know, then you have to speak about it, you know, wow. and then finally is the action, which yeah. is the, which is the formal acknowledgement. Right. Wow. One hundred percent. That's that's uh, excellent. That's that's the Seder Astalshalus, the the chain of descent on how you probably have the Kabbalah there, right? Like, oh, so it just perplexes me that people think like you have to go before a base in in order to receive a portion in the world to come. Like that's just weird. That's that's that is uh something's not right about that. You're not, you're not an intermediary to Hashem. You can't. You should not be an intermediary to Hashem. It's forbidden to be an intermediary, uh, to to have, to to be uh, a shituf. It's forbidden. 
It's permitted for the ignorant to use Shitu, but it's forbidden to somebody to make themselves into the Shitu. Um, it creates a Vodazara. So, what is a better translation? Uh, a person accepts these, a person who accepts the seven mitzvahs, doesn't say seven mitzvahs, that's what we're talking about. A person who accepts upon himself these, they are called, they are called Gertoshav in all places. It's not, it's not in the land. I've heard that too. Oh, uh, Gertoshav only exists in, in the land of Israel. No. It's in all places. And the Rambam says this in two other places, I believe, in the Mishnah Torah. He says it two places. I think he believes he says it here, and then I think he says it uh, like in uh, Surah Bia or something like that. In all places. He is called Ger Toshav in all places. This acceptance well, must be in the presence of three Torah scholars. Why? Because it's for Yisrael's acceptance of you accepting them. I read, I read here, in, you know, this in the notes in uh, Art Scrolls, uh, Torah. It says here, a person who formally accepts these laws is called a resident alien, a Uh This applies in any place. Uh, these laws regarding resident aliens only apply while the entire Jewish people live in Eretz Israel, Il Kota Volazora 10.6. Nevertheless, in that era, a Gentile could accept the obligation of a resident alien in any land. Excellent. Because it's talking about Yisrael's acceptance of you accepting the seven. Does that make sense? Like, like to yeah. say that, yeah, to say that there has to be two parties involved in your relationship with Hashem is weird. And I, heard, I hate to say, you know, sound like the DNC here, but that's just weird. <laughs> Russell, can you post that in the Facebook Messenger? In this, or do we have a Facebook Messenger on this, Parsha? I can do it on the. I can do it in the group, I guess. And, and, yeah, uh, put it in the group. I'll I'll uh, share it. We we have a chat too, but I just don't think many people use yeah, that, it. That'd be a good uh, reference for anybody yeah. who you know <clears throat> may be up against anything like that. Yeah. Well, this is when the this is huge. Make, when the Mashiach makes himself known, there will only be uh, two groups. There will be the Jews, and then there will be uh, the, uh, lack of better words, the Noahites. Um, yeah, so that's... Um, I don't. Know, I don't know what else to say. If anybody's got any questions, I, I, I feel bad that I've talked about the whole thing, but it's so important as well. Like it's such a big deal. Um, the, to I know didn't the, mind. I learned a lot. Yeah. To know the difference between a a goyakum, a ben noach, and a ger toshav. The ger toshav has Kabbalah. Now, does the Israel have Kabbalah of your Kabbalah? They're going to say, well, we need a three Havarim. That's fine. They can do whatever they want. But the Rambam does say for its Tzedakah, a Ben Noach that gives Tzedakah. That's like the loophole, so to speak. The Yisrael might not call you Ger Toshav. You can call yourself Ger Toshav. But they are not going to accept your calling of yourself, Gertoshav. That's why I say I, I create like a, 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 a line, a new term where I say like a Gertoshav. Because when it comes to the wisdom of all that involvement after living within the Jewish community for, I don't know, was it 10 years? 
that's the wisdom that was I was able to create, like a Gertoshov. That's what this is. It's like, or, 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 or where is it? Um, 1010 here. A Ben Noach that gives Sadaka. He is like a Gertoshav when he gives Sadaka. And the people ex seem to accept it. That 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 process, in my opinion, is it helps bring Gaula. That interact those types of interactions. Um, yeah, so in the uh, Ben Noach, so so Akum Goy, they are not careful on the seven. They could care less. They I don't know what they do, but they don't do the seven. They definitely don't have Kabbalah. Then you have a Ben Noach. He does the seven, but he's not commanded. He does not have Kabbalah. He does them just because they they're moral things to do. You're trying to bring everybody though to the Torah to have Kabbalah in the seven bare minimum, and such a person is called Ger Toshav. And if a rabbi says, well, we don't have Geratoshav today, sorry, we'll say, well, it says here in Hilchot Malachim 10.10 that if I give tzedakah to you, you are treating me like a Geratoshav. You can call me whatever you want, but you got to treat me, according to the Rambam, like a Geratoshav. So it's piecemeal. Geratoshav is piecemeal today. It's a piecemeal thing. The whole plate isn't available because there's no yovel. But the thing is, there's nothing in Judaism today that's full plate. Everything's peaceful. Right. There's no temple. Even Jews don't give sacrifices today. They're they're missing out on mitzvahs. They're missing out on the, the things that are in the Yovel as well. So we're all interacting piecemeal. And when everybody understands that, that's when everybody gets in, on board. We all have unification. We're all on board with the Torah. And that congregation of Yaakov puts everything in gear. That's Geula. All righty. Well, it's late, guys. I, I feel bad. I We didn't get to the, the Tanya. Uh, I'm going to have to like, label this a different class. But, uh, yeah. It was a great question by Dixie. Um, I feel like I put a whole book though like into like an hour of uh hour and a half but uh well thank you james for yeah. answering yeah. my question i appreciate yeah. it yeah it was great yeah, thank you. Thank you. i learned a lot excellent yeah I, mean, I think this summed up things pretty well i feel like maybe we should label it something and then uh share it uh, as a maybe a different type of um, a different the, type. Uh, so. the difference That's between the, the three yeah, you we'll know call, Jay, call it like a gear to shav today you yeah. Can, yeah, you can call it that. Or remember the question you were asking the rabbi? What is the difference between an akum, right? Oh, yeah. And the um, other, what's... Uh, ben Noach, or uh, ben, Noach. ben Noach that gives Sadaka. Thoughts, yeah. feelings, action. Yeah. Yeah. Questions, yeah. yeah. Yeah, basically that would be a good title. It's like the question, mm -hmm. making it a question to the rabbi. That's that's excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, what it does is it health healthily puts them on the spot <laughs> because it gets yeah. it gets them into the sugya, and this is where we are in the geula in the redemptive phase. This is where we are right now. It's mm -hmm. non-Jews and Jews not being able to interact together in a kosher manner. This is this is it. This is where we need to start interact, and we some of us do. I'm not saying Yisrael on totality doesn't. There's there's the Israel that do get it that are in the sugya, but on a whole, we we really need to. So that's a we'll, we'll uh, label it like a question, like what's uh yeah. So maybe help me, Mercy, with the title or something. And um... I think you had you had said it earlier. It's it's in it's in your recording. It was earlier tonight when you were okay. saying, uh, your question was, Rabbi, uh, basically, what was the difference between the akum and the other? Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of the other now. What's the difference between a Goy and a Ben Noach that gives Sadaka? Or what's the difference? Yeah. Between, yeah. Uh, yeah. Something yeah. to that effect. Because then, you know, if a rabbi stumbles across that, they're going to go, oh, wait a minute. What is this? You know, 
Yeah. If even if they don't know, sometimes you know, just because somebody's a rabbi doesn't mean that they have complete totally. understanding either. One hundred percent. What's really funny is that I you. remember reading something like Thank this you. exact thing years years ago, and I don't know where I read it. Hmm. Could have been, could have been me. Thing. I'm starting to realize like I've been around a while. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh... <laughs> I'm starting to find memes that like I created 10 years ago or whatever. And like somebody reposts it and I'm like, that looks familiar. <laughs> so, yeah. Alrighty. Well, anyway, uh, guys, uh, pray that I meet my soulmate. Alrighty. Yeah. I'd hate to put out a prayer there. Yeah. But... Alrighty. Well, okay. I pray that you uh, meet your soulmate and, uh, uh, this will wrap up um, what was going to be chapter 10, but uh, we'll label it. We'll figure it out. So thank you all for, for st stopping in and uh, everybody who's going to watch uh, the, the recording. I, I appreciate you guys for watching. It makes, uh, makes me feel like I'm doing something uh, beneficial for everybody. And I know everybody here in the group uh, benefits. Uh, we all benefit from each other. So I really appreciate you. Yeah all being here um owen dixie russell Teresa, and mercy so thank you guys so much for 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 uh joining tonight i really appreciate it enjoy it hey, thanks. 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 i'll see you next wednesday all right thank and you so much to have, uh, uh type some things out you know on uh, on uh, messenger okay all right shavuoto everybody see you all next week god bless yeah.